Okay, this is the model Harvest Saver R5A for commercial dehydrator systems, our most popular model. I want to walk you through the operational tips and guidelines of this machine. Keep it very simple. Uh, there's This is our Honeywell controller at the top here. And these are the only buttons I want you to be concerned with, the ones that says lower display and the arrow up and arrow down buttons. Those are the only ones we're really going to be concerned with. The rest are for us to program the machine. You can't really use those, so don't be concerned about those. So the first thing we're going to do is set our air speed. And in this case, we've got four fan speeds. One through four, we're always, we always want to leave it on four. It's all about the air, how we use it, how we direct it, and how much we use. So unless we're blowing something off the tray, we're going to keep the airspeed on fan number four at all times. Even if we're blowing something off the tray, there's ways to deal with that without turning the airspeed down. We can get to that in a few minutes. So our first setting, as we have our fan speed running, you can hear the dryer running. We're going to look in here and we have SP, and this number on the bottom is that this is your set point, the temperature that you want it to be in the dryer. Right now we have it set at 115 degrees. If I want to raise it to 165, I'm going to raise the, hit the arrow up button and watch the temperature climb very quickly up to 160, 165. And you see the temperature, the number above it is the actual temperature in the dryer as it's climbing right now. And you see it climbs fairly quickly. It'll get up to 165, it'll overshoot a couple of degrees, maybe up to 168, 169, maybe 170. If it senses it, the heater is backed off, it will drop back down and settle right where you want it to be on your set point. So it's very accurate that way. So that's your set point, the temperature you want to dry at, and that's how you set it or change it in the dryer. So one more time, I want to press lower display, and I see OT followed by 100.0. Right now, as I turned it on, the dryer is pulling 100%, using 100% of the electricity it needs to heat it up to 165 degrees. So it's still heating it up. It's going to use, it's using 100% of the electricity right now. Once it gets to 165, our set point, pretty soon this number, the required electricity is going to drop way, way, way down to possibly 15 or 20% because all we're doing is keeping the dryer at that temperature once we've got it to temperature. So at that point, we're going to be using very little electricity. Here in Oregon, this averages out to 62 cents per hour to run this machine. That's pretty darn good operational cost if you figure it out for the dwell time of your product. The dwell time is the time that your product spends in the dryer. So right now, we're still using 100% of the electricity. That'll start dropping very shortly. Right now, we're up to 134 degrees, climbing onto 165. So we've got our set point, we've got our electrical draw. The next setting is going to be the 2N. This number here, 12, that is the actual humidity inside the dryer right now. It has nothing to do with the moisture in your product. This is the moisture coming off of your product combined with the humidity in the air that you're pulling into the dryer. So right now, with no product in the dryer and the, and the air intake slightly open, I've got 11% humidity in the dryer right now. With product in there, and when you first turn it on, that's going to raise dramatically as the moisture and comes off your product in the form of steam. So right now, the only way to change that is opening or closing the air intake. We'll get to that in a few minutes. So that's your two industry humidity rating. It still shows you the set point of uh, the, the, the temperature in the dryer as it's climbing to 165. Hit the lower display a fourth time and shows deviation. Right now, the deviation, our set point is 165 and I'm at 149. I'm 16 degrees, now 15 degrees away from where I want it to be. It just shows you how far you are away from where you want to be. When I'm right on 165, the deviation will be zero. So the final setting on OT, hit OT, lower display one last time. You'll see a second OT, and there's something different about the O. There's a little tick right in the top. What we're looking to have here is our timer function. The timer is OT, it's set at 0.0, .0 or zero hours and minutes. Let's, uh, let's say 
that, uh, for instance, we've determined that your product takes three hours and 30 minutes to dry. We're going to hit the air off button and watch some minutes tick away in minutes and up to three hours, three, point, three hours and 30 minutes. So we'll go to 3.30. So we have our dryer set for three hours and 30 minutes as we're ready to head home for the evening. So to start the timer function with the dryer running, the only time we hit another button is in the lower right hand corner, the run hold button. We're going to hit that and now the, the little tick in the O starts going counterclockwise. We are now counting backwards from three hours and 30 minutes to 329, 328, 327 and it will shut off when it gets to zero. One of the tips, if you determine it takes three hours and 30 minutes to dry your product during the daytime while you're there, when you set the load at night, set the timer at night, maybe you should, should set it for three hours and 15 minutes because when it shuts off, the dryer is still gonna be very warm and take a little while to cool, cool down, your product will continue to dehydrate slightly. So you might want to, uh, prepare for that little bit of time time delay so you don't over dry your product at night. So for instance let's say that you set the dryer for three hours and thirty minutes and you realize I meant to set it for four hours and thirty minutes. You made a mistake. You can't stop that timer unless the time's all the way out to zero, we're not gonna wait three and a half hours. The only way we can stop and change that timer in this case is either reach around and unplug the machine, go to the breaker box, flip the breaker, or if, if it's more convenient, there's take the screws out, there's a breaker up here in the lower corner, flip that. We're, we need to interrupt the power, flip it back on. And now we can reset our timer again where we want it to be up to four hours and 30 minutes. So you must interrupt the power in order to reset the timer once you've started. So lower display, we're just going to bring us back to set point again, 165. The next one is your electrical draw. Right now we're up to 156, we're close to one. So we're only using 27% of the required electricity right now. So we're already into our uh, electrical savings. Our two in, we're down to 6% humidity in the dryer right now. Our deviation, we're 10 degrees in where we actually want it to be, so we've got 10, 10 degree deviation. And our timer, we're now at 3 hours and 20 minutes, and I set the timer, and now we're timing. So that's your, that's your settings and your controls up here on your Honeywell controller. It's very simple. Five settings, your set point, your electrical draw, your humidity reading, your deviation of where you want it to be, and your timer function. So that's it. Leave your fan speed on number four. Now I want to talk about the air intake down below. When we start a, when we start a load, what we want to do is get the core temperature of the product up as quickly as we can. There's one good way of doing that. We know that heat transfers much quicker through water than it does through air alone. So what we're going to do at the start, we want to close this air intake off all the way. That's going to trap the humidity coming off of your product in the form of steam. It's going to trap it in that dryer. Why would we want to do that? Well, again, the heat transfers through that water much quicker to the water in the product. So now that jump starts the dehydration and raises the core temperature of that product. Now we're off gassing. Once we raise the core temperature of that product, at least 20 degrees, I know the surface has gone up much more than that, so we are off-gassing, releasing this moisture. We have, in effect, jump-started the dehydration. If we don't, if we leave the air open right from the start, it takes quite a bit longer for that core temperature to finally get heated up and off-gas uh, uh, versus the, the method that I just explained. Close it and let's trap that humidity and jump-start that dehydration. Now this process typically only takes 15 to 20 minutes for most products, sometimes less, 
sometimes a little bit more. We monitor the core temperature of the product. We'll put a digital thermometer here where the cord through and monitor the product on the left hand side of the tray. The product sees the air last. And we, once we monitor the core temperature of that, watch it go up 20 degrees, that's when we know, then that's the signal to reach down and open up this air intake, possibly one piece of the pie, never, never all the way. That's way too much air, plus just temperature and the humidity out. We want to keep some humidity in there. So we're going to open up approximately one piece of the pie. That's going to flush out the majority of the humidity in there, keep some of it in there as a tool. We want to use the humidity. We don't want the air too dry. That's, that's detrimental to your product. So we're going to trap the humidity in the dryer for that first portion to raise the core temperature. The humidity is going to act like lotion on your skin in the desert, keep your skin from drying and cracking. We're going to keep that humidity from drying out, uh, the, from the air drying out and cracking your body so fast. So we're going to use that as a little bit of a tool. It'll keep a nicer color to your product and raise that core temperature very quickly. So what I want to do now is open the dryer. I'll show you the, the trays. These trays are a, a choice of either, either perforated trays to let ample air flow through the bottom. It's all about the air. We like a lot of air. And we want it to get to the bottom if possible. For the products that we cannot uh, get air to the bottom of, such as liquids or fruit leathers or very small seeds, we're going to use a solid tray. Most products are going to stick to the tray, some very badly. So we, in most cases, not all, but in most cases, we're going to use a, select the right tray liner to prevent the product from sticking to the tray. It's going to do two things, to prevent the sticking, but allow the product to be raised off the, the tray itself to get plenty of air to the bottom of the product. So we're drying from the bottom and the top and much more even drying that way. This liner here, large openings, is a plastic, food grade, high temperature liner for jerky. This is, works very well for jerky and certain other products, but mainly for jerky. We have a smaller plastic mesh liner for fruits and vegetables and kale chips and things like that. Small, lots of air through to the bottom, but it releases that when you bend the liner, that product just pops off, no breakage. It's just wonderful for the, those certain types of products. Again, for fruit leather and solid products, uh, uh, for solid trays, we don't want the liquid to leak through, uh, leak through so we're going to use a solid Teflon liner for our fruit leathers or liquids. Uh, we have a mesh Teflon liner for certain products, or two over certain products. Again, you see the holes, lots, that's lots of air breathe through the bottom. The Teflon liners cost a little bit more than the plastic liners, but uh, sometimes they're suited, more suited for certain products. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, and you see we have a, a door switch here, similar to a refrigerator. When that, we pull the door open, it's going to turn the dryer off. Uh, you might want to keep an eye on this to keep it from getting sticky so it doesn't stick and stay on when you pull the door open. So a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of oil on that will uh, keep the dryer, uh, keep that door switch operating properly. So what I want to talk to you now is, is about the kill step for jerky. I want to brief you. For jerky products here in the United States, there's a lethality step procedure that you have to take to ensure that the meat is free of bacteria. So what we're going to do in this particular case, we have again, as always, we need to close off the air intake all the way, thus trapping the humidity inside that dryer. That's the humidity that's going to pull up the core temperature of the jerky and the meat the very quickly. So what we're looking to do is pull the core temperature of the jerky up. Uh, for USDA, USDA guidelines, we want to get the core temperature up to 145 degrees. And we hold it there for four minutes, combined with at least a minimum of 27% humidity. They say 27 to 32 or above for at least four minutes at 145 degree temperature, core temperature, you have killed that bacteria. If you raise the core temperature to 158 degrees, there's no four minutes, instantaneously the bacteria are dead. Now, we're working with the government right now to show them the difference between a dryer 
and a oven. The regulations are written for ovens, so in, in many cases, they're gonna want you to keep this air intake closed for a full hour. That can be detrimental to your product. So there's ways we can deal with that and meet the government's requirement and still keep a nice color and taste and texture to your jerky. And uh, if you need some tips and more guidelines on that, please call us at 1-800-369-4283. Talk to anybody in the sales department. We'd be happy to help you and walk you through this. Again, this is the model R5A Harvest Saver, our most popular model. Very, very affordable to operate, very easy to operate. If any questions, you know how to get a hold of us. We'd be happy to help. Thank you very much.